Hello, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at some more cloaking technologies and some, some other things. We're going to be doing a bit of variety of testing in, in this video, but we're still focusing on cloaking. And in this battle, what we've got, we've got uh, some more late game technology. We're going to actually look at psionic shield, psionic cloaking, and how that works against our, uh, I guess, late game tech missile cruisers that we've seen were very effective in my video from yesterday, the first video. So you can see in this, we've just got uh, pretty much the best missile tech you can get without going into some of the new weapons, which I want to save that for later videos. I want to do specifically videos on the, each of the new weapons. So I don't want to delve too much into those ones at the moment. But you can see we've got pretty much all late game tech here. We're using artillery combat computers, all the late game tech there, which is pretty standard stuff. So just an upgraded version of our missile cruiser. Over here, we've got our psionic cruisers. And I've got a bit of a mix for this. I just wanted to try something. I've got a few different versions and I'll, I'll try it. We've got psionic shields. So it gives you 900 shields and 5% shield regen and the reason we're using some psionic shields and this is the most i could fit in due to uh power requirements because there was not enough uh, <laughs> power to put anymore basically and that's we're using the dark matter reactor too so we're talking like gameish technology without the dark reactor you'd probably have to drop another uh, another uh psionic shield or reduce your weapon somehow uh We've got the psionic phase field cloaking. And if you read the stats there, the reason why this is uh, picked psionic shields is because with the psi phase generator, you can use psionic shields in combination with it. And when you decloak, you will have the full shields from the psionic shields. So that means we'll be going in with 2,700 shields up, which will give us uh, a nice advantage considering we're cloaked and we should get off the first, first volley. Then we've got two... Um, Lots of shield hardening to give us 50% shield hardening to try and mitigate the missiles which have the shield penetration. So it should negate 50% of their shield penetration ability, which should cut out roughly half the damage until they break down our shields and get through. And then they'll be into our armor, which we've got a significant amount of, 3,625. And missiles do not have bonuses against armor, so it's just standard damage or hull. So they'll have to bust through all this armor and then they'll be into our hull. So hopefully these shield hardeners provide a good a um, good bonus. And the weapons we're using, I'm just going with artillery. I just want to try standard artillery. And although it's mostly shield damage, it's just high DPS at long range to try and uh, pick off those kiting cruisers at long range. And I've, I've opted for missiles with this build simply so they can add firepower at long range. Not a lot of synergy because kinetics bashing down the shields and their missiles are going through the shields. But hopefully we can um, smash them down pretty quick. And uh, uh, most people aren't using lots of shields at the moment anyway. Although this Sonic build is quite strong on the shields. This build, not so strong on the shields. Going lots of armor. But you could opt in to put in some more shields in here as well, just to, if people are going more um, anti-armor weapons and things like that. But the other ones are pure shield, so you should see and not much anti-armor at all. No anti-armor, actually. So this should have a significant advantage, at least defensively. We'll see if we can mitigate enough of their offensive firepower with uh, this fleet. So let's um, cloak this fleet. There we go. Cloaking. I like watching the... Uh, Cloaking mechanic, actually. There we go. Clooped. And I think what happens is when you engage in battle, um, the opening shot, because you're decloaking and firing, there's a bit of a glitch with the graphics. It doesn't look like they're firing, but they are. You'll see the damage appear on the fleet. I might pause it when that happens as well. So not running with any um, uh, admirals. Uh, simply they're, they're very similar in firepower. There's only a little bit of difference in it. And um, this fleet was actually, uh, the Sonic fleet was actually uh, cheaper to build than the missile fleet by a little bit. All right, let's uh, get this underway. Okay, so we're cloaked, we're gonna engage. Let's see how this goes. Our 
ship is beset by enemies. Okay, so see the uh, slowly kind of worked that time. That was good. And speed up. The cake's firing away. They're firing away their missiles. 27, 27, 19, 19, 18. Down to 7, so we're losing a few more ships, but the fleet firepower is holding. Okay, let's have a look at the damage, because we're still 70, 17, but I think more ships there are shooting. So what's doing the damage here? So the Kinect Artillery is getting through the hole now. Whirlwind missiles and Marauder missiles are going through, but both uh, fleets have got that. They, this would have probably 80% of the missiles. Whirlwind missiles, armor, yep, they're smashing down the armor. The kinetic's getting through the armor, 50% efficient, which is not the best, but best we can do. And damage to shields. Kinetic has to pounding down the shields at 200% efficiency, which is great. That's me hanging in the fight here because of, I think, the shield hardeners. Anyone's battle still, though, with this fleet's. Missile fleet's dropping down a bit. Kinetic looks like it's getting advantage. For the moment. It's good to see the two lines just duking it out. Like the old sailing ships of old, just a big line. And, and battleships from World War I, the Battle of Jutland. Just duking it out. At range, so it's pretty. It's pretty close. It's still pretty even. You can see this fleet suffered considerably more more damage. They lost eight to fourteen, or they're down to eight, and we've got fourteen. It's a long battle, actually, just dueling it out. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, there we go. So that's the retreated fleet. So this fleet lost six. And they lost, well, 14 all overall. So, and I did talk about this uh, probably a month or so ago, that compared to missiles, um, disruptors, other bypass weapons, because they're not really, really high DPS generally, except for the focused arc emitter, the kinetic and uh, laser weapons and plasma weapons, things like that, you tend to get actual more ship deaths. You can see that here played out again. 14 versus six ships remaining. So that's, um, yeah, in terms of alloys, actually replacing alloys, there could be a good argument for using kinetic lasers, plasmas, because they actually do more uh, destruction, actually taking out the ship due to their higher um, damage output of their weapons, which tends to kill the, can kill the ships before they're able to disengage. So, here we go. So I know everyone's talking about the missile matter, but in the late game, missiles drop off a little bit, but you can still see it's pretty close. And this was just a basic um, kinetic artillery with some missiles um, in terms of weapons. But you could see with the shields and uh, the shield hardeners that we used, it negated significant amounts of the uh, damage. And you can still see the damage output here. 33,000 kinetic artillery to hull. So you can see the damage there from Whirlwind and Marauders. It's just well behind the kinetic artillery and damage to hull. Kinetic artillery damage to armor, 59,000. You can see the damage output of the missiles as well down, and normally that would be significantly higher. You can see, so kinetic artillery, 52,000 there, 59,000, so that's what, 111. So that's uh, 144, 45,000 damage the kinetic artillery did alone. So that's pretty significant and probably what won it in the end. Even though the artillery was firing at a disadvantage because the other guys had mostly armor. So there you go. All right, we'll uh, move on to the next battle. So for this battle, we've got our Sonic Shields, Sonic. Um, uh, face field generator cloaking is again the same as last time. We're keeping our shield hardeners. Let's see how effective shield hardeners are versus the missiles. We're going for a devastating close range strike. Sneak up behind the enemy, unload devastating torpedo strike, hit them with disruptors as well. Hopefully, we get off 
a few multiple shops at close ranged torpedo uh, interface uh, versus our missile cruisers which is pretty much unchanged and I hope they get a few shots in them before they pull away of their afterburners and we'll start to see how the battle goes but I suspect that this fleet will pull away at range and just keep bombarding the, uh, the torpedo fleet and probably just whittle it down in the end so that's the thing we have to see how, how effective that is whether we can do enough damage with the cloak because it's cloaked sneaking up behind the fleet how much damage we do in the opening strike or two before this fleet pulls away and gets us so I suspect the result will be the missiles will win, but I wanted to test this out with the shield hardeners to see if we could stay in the fight, maybe close the distance and, um, you know, catch them on the edge of the system and then the torpedoes can wreck them. Let's see how it goes. One of our stations is beset by enemies. Torpedoes are firing. There we go. Okay, let's have a look at that opening strike. That was very effective. They lost five cruisers in the opening strike. They've lost 50% of their armor. Lost a bunch of hull. We've lost no ships so far. So that's how effective uh, shield hardeners have been. Let's check the damage. Opening strike. So we did 15,000 damage to the hull. Nearly 16,000. The disruptors did another three and a half. So nearly you're getting close to 20,000 damage in the opening salvo. Look at that damage to armor. 72,000. Wow, that's just crazy. And the Whirlwind missiles, um, they had didn't get through to the hull. They only did, so they had, what, 7,500 damage get through to the armor. And the shields absorbed. Is that exactly the same? That is too. Look, that's how the 50% shield hardeners work. It absorbed, the shields absorbed 50% of the damage that they put out. So they put out the missiles looks like about 15,000 damage in their first shot and 50% got absorbed by the shield hardeners and it only went through the armor nothing through to the hull and you can see our armor is way high and our shields are still way high our psionic shields so we've got full shields and close to full armor still now you can see these ships are running away so let's see how this plays out they'll just whittle us away at range now a good opening salvo, but I'm not sure how this is going to go. Pulling away from us. Mining station Speed this up. Now they're going to change targets, of course. Again, changing targets. Yeah, they're just going to bounce around in the middle now. Chasing, see, they just chase this guy, he runs away. They're going to chase that guy. And... Come on, just chase him to the edge of the system. Yeah. What's this? <laughs> Confirm the covenant. I think this battle's over. Great first strike, but you can just see the combat computers. These ships are just too fast. You can see how good the speed is. See? They're just playing like, um, what's that game called? We've got the piggy piggy in the middle. <laughs> Okay, so that's a retreated fleet now, so, yeah. So our first strike was devastating, and that was it. So now what I might try is that same ship design, but with some afterburners, and we'll see if that um, changes the battle, just to see how effective it was overall. We just need to get the speed up. So, but the shield hardener is really good, but if you can't catch the enemy fleet, pff, nothing we can do. So for this fight, all I've changed is the afterburners instead of the shield hardeners. Everything else remains exactly the same. I've tried to close the distance a little bit, really sneak up behind this fleet. So maybe we can get a second shot off, maybe. We'll see before they run. Um, with our extra speed, you can see our speed is now, uh, well, it's 148 because we're uh, 181 because we're cloaked. But I think it was about 250 odd when I looked at it before versus their 280 odd. So we won't be too much too far behind them so let's see how this let's, let's see how this plays out this should be a bit more interesting there we go torpedoes away boom okay so we took out four this time disruptors are firing you see the damage difference this time and nothing true to the hull 
The episode took us a lot of damage. Well, when missiles are still getting through, no damage to shields. So I did 9,000 odd damage that time. Seem to be chasing a certain degree. See, they're still, they're still staying in disruptor range. Still whittling them down a bit. Chasing <laughs> just a couple of ships, though. So. Same things happening, we just can't catch them, can we? Just bouncing around the middle again. And see how the missile cruisers have all spread out. Yep, so this battle's over. Let's finish it off. Taking quite a few losses this, this time. Yeah, that's a retreated fleet. Yeah, so you can just see the missile crews are really effective against even cloaked fleets. Um, you have to go, you know, I, I, I'd love to sneak up and just have the torpedoes firing uh, and obliterating them, but um, those close range torpedoes just are not very, not very good. So I might try the longer range torpedoes now with this and we'll see if that makes any difference. Okay, so this time we've got our, uh, this is a torpedo fleet. I haven't used um, the PSI shields and that thing. I'm just going for a standard build armor, uh, one shield. Neutron launchers with missiles. So we're going for long range firepower to see if we can at least engage those fleets at longer range and knock them down. Um, Missiles as well, just long range, add long range firepower to whittle them down. We've got two afterburners. We do have uh, the level three cloaking field. So we'll see how this plays out. It's versus our standard missile fleet. No changes to the missile fleet at all. Uh, that was artillery combat computer, wasn't it? Yes. Okay. All right, let's see how this plays out. Like the energy torpedoes didn't fire. Did they have a minimum range, did they? They did too. They were too close to fire their first shot. Bugger. Oh well. Let's see if it makes much of a difference. They got 45 range. So they just lost a couple seconds there in the opening. You can see here though, they've split off. They had a 14, 17, but they got less fiber than more ships have disengaged. We did fight a similar battle to this a bit earlier. Earlier game tech yesterday. It's pretty close. Oof. They've lost 10 to versus 5. It's just those weapons again. Difference in weapons. Very close, but they uh, might just win it. Unless we can have a good torpedo shot in. Oh, 6.2. Comes the next torpedo barrage. And a 4, oh, 4, 4k each. 3.1, 2.9. This is the closest battle I've seen. Ship versus ship. Guess they've got more missiles. Oof. Uh, okay. So you can see, okay, it's retreated. Very, very close. Very, very close. So what I might do, I might put the sonic shields and stuff on this fleet and give it another well and just <laughs> make sure I'm 45 away before I engage. So we get that extra second or two. That might have actually cost us the battle. But that was interesting to see just how close that was to the missiles. Okay, for this fight, what I've changed is I've added in a couple of Sionic shields, the Sionic cloak, so we get some shields up while we decloak, so it gives us some protection, um, even though they're firing missiles and gives us middle missile penetration. Um, 
we will get a bit of speed there from the afterburners. I could put in one shield hardener, maybe one afterburner, because we are firing at long range. That's the only thing. So I have to try it to see how it goes. We are artillery, so they might sit there and duke it out. So it could be better off going for shield hardeners there. And this might give us a greater advantage. But we'll see how this pay plans out because the enemy does have a shield penetration. So it may not be very good going shields there, even the sonic shields. But anyway, we'll, um, we'll play it out because we haven't got any shield hardeners. So it's pretty pointless having the shields, really. But anyway, let's just play it and see what happens. There you go, they're engaging torpedoes away straight away, that's better. I like how it calculates it now when you actually hit, not the start. So, 26 versus 19, still doing a lot of damage. 18, 19. Just juking it out. See, this is where if you've got artillery versus artillery, you don't need the speed, the afterburners, for this fleet. Damage. Neutron launchers. Still doing a lot. Not as much as the missiles. Hmm. Pretty close, but um, looks like the missiles have got it. Twelve versus fourteen. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. So we're getting close to it. All right. Oh, um, I might just change those afterburners. We'll put some shield hardeners in and see how that goes. Okay, so I've quickly changed the shield hardeners into the fleet. Everything else is the same, so our shield should mitigate a little bit of the damage coming in, and nothing else has changed. So the, the key to beating the missile ships might be, we know that they have to use artillery to use their speed and stay away from us so that you can juke it out. So we've got the same sort of range weapons as they do, so they can't really get away from us. So using the artillery, computers are just both going to stand off at range and fire at each other. We don't need to catch them. So we just need to be able to mitigate the damage, incoming damage, because our weapons are long enough to fire at them and we know they're not going to run away because we're not going to get close enough to force them to run away. They'll stay at that range as long as we don't close in on them. They'll stay there, so we don't need that. So instead of having afterburners, we go have shield hardeners because we don't need to catch them. We just fire at range and we know they're going to sit there because that's the way artillery computers work. Let's see how this goes. Heretic fleet It lost one ship in the opening salvo. You can see our shields taking damage. And they regen a little bit. They've lost five ships already. Six ships. Let's have a look at the damage. The neutron launcher seed. Last battle, the Marauder missiles and whirlwind were top, neutrons were down the bottom, so we're mitigating the damage coming through. That's still roughly about even. That's probably a little bit in front, actually, the hull. Neutron launchers, a lot more in front of the armor. Damage to shields, yeah. 50% efficient. Okay. You can see we keep regening a little bit too, those sonic shields. We might have found a winner here, guys. This could be a winner. Still close in firepower. Ooh, I might have spoke too soon. I don't know, they've lost a lot of ships, and we're actually killing a lot of ships. Our ships are disengaging, and we're actually killing a lot. Two to one at the moment. More. There you go. So they disengaged. What have they got left? I think they had six left, was it? Yeah, six ships. The six, six ships versus our 16. So they lost 14 ships versus our four. So and all I changed was the shield hardeners. That was it. That's how much difference that made. So there we go. We've got a winner. We've got a winner for a very effective winner against the missile cruiser Meta. This could be a really good, uh, strong build 
if you're playing Sonic, that is. Um, uh, Sonic is probably really underrated at the moment. They are. It is very powerful with some of the additions they've now made. I thought it was, wasn't was too bad before. I thought Cybernetic was probably the best, but now some of the weapons you can get with um, shields in the, sh in the shroud and uh, face uh, the, the cloaking for um, Sonic. It's just uh, yeah, a cloaked Sonic that can have shields when they uncloak, unloading yeah, devastating close range torpedoes if you can do it against missiles you need to go with something like this a longer range build you saw earlier so the artillery was also pretty good as well artillery with missiles was very effective you want to go that path um but without the you could probably get away with just using uh neutronium shields as well you'd probably win the battle still if you have a shield hard it'd be a lot closer but with these guys having the shields um up when we uh decloak makes it a lot better but You'd probably, want, you'd probably just get all armor. You're just doing um, uh, without uh, psionic. You just get all armor. You'd, you'd probably still be very effective. The only thing is you have to have, for this, for psionic shield, you've got to have dark matter because you don't have enough power or you have to maybe just go two torpedoes instead of three. But uh, yeah, that sort of build beats the missile better if, if you're going late game. All right, I'm going to look at a couple more battles, a bit earlier game tech. Uh, so a bit of change from a few things we did yesterday. So I want to have a quick look at that, and uh, it's from a few people's comments that as well. Okay, so for this fight, we've got a replay of our mixed Corvette frigate fleet that we had yesterday, but I've changed it to pick computers to try and see if that will change some of the battle mechanics a bit. Uh, it's cloaked fleet with disruptors. Uh, similar to what we have again, there's more early game technology that you can see here. I hope the Corvettes can uh, rush out um, and keep with their speed and hopefully harass the cruisers who get keep close enough to harass them while our frigates, hopefully, uh, our frigates, yeah, close the distance and unload torpedo damage with uh, the torpedo uh, com combat computers, everything else, early game tech versus our early game uh, missile meta, which is pretty standard these days that people use okay let's see if this will work see how much we do much damage in opening phase okay so they lost three cruisers straight up Three cruisers for two of our smaller ships. Now they're starting to pull away, but our Corvettes are closing. See, they're harassing with the disruptors. This is what I wanted to see last uh, yesterday. We'll see if they keep continue to maintain a distance. They're starting to pull away. No, close the distance. No, keep going for them. What are you doing? Ah, now they're going to play piggy in the middle again. Come on, just close on that, close on that group. Come on, there you go, you've engaged them again. Get in there, close the torpedo range. No, why'd you turn around? You had them. Fight at the sun. See that people fight at the sun. They got that one, they got that cruiser. They're firing at the sun again at like 100 range. <laughs> Keep it six. See, they just close range. The picket computers are a bit better, but it's all over now. You see, they're still picking them off. They're fighting. You so could have won that. They just would just close the range. Just pick a target and stick to them and chase them down. Uh, as a treated fleet. All right, so I just thought I'd try the bigger computers and see how they go. It didn't really work. So it's just, uh, as once again, those close range weapons, they just don't work even with cloak against the uh, missile ships. All right, I'm gonna try something else. So for this fight, we've got uh, a mixed fleet again. We've got 20 PD destroyers 
So obviously some of these PD can mitigate some of the missiles coming in. We're using uh, close range uh, anti-armor weapons as missile ships tend to be mostly armor. So just a little mix there, just to add a bit of firepower. Uh, yeah, same sort of setup here. We're going to pick at computers once again, see if we can chase them down. Not sure the destroyers will be quick enough, but at least they should shoot down a lot of the stuff trying to get to our frigates. I think it's going to be a case of, once again, we can't catch them. But uh, some people ask to see some PD and see how it goes. Um, same setup here, torpedoes, disruptors, artillery, versus the same missile ship design. As you can see, it's got the three afterburners and our, oh, our destroyers. We don't have that because we've got our cloak. So let's see how we go. Heretic fleet engaged. There we go. See our PD firing, torpedoes going in. They've so killed three ships straight off the bat. And we lost one frigate. Actually destroyed some and retreated. Destroyers are doing it. You can see the PD firing. Just not closing the distance, so to do damage once again. They're good opening salvo, but we're just not. See, why not just pursue them? Pursue a group. They'll turn around, chase these. See, they turn around. So the trick here, guys, is long range weapons. We saw that in some of the other battles. The energy weapons, the artillery, to pin down those missile ships. To a, a combination of other missiles as well. Seems like long range torpedoes is the go and artillery is the go to beat this missile meta. Short range weapons just don't do it because of this combat computer setup. They just don't, uh, they made them so they, all right, pick targets, chase them down until you destroy them. Pick like the largest group, concentration of enemy forces, charge it and then kill it. So easy win there for the missile cruisers. So you can see there how it doesn't matter with the PD. It really doesn't matter. Uh, you don't need the PD to beat missile ships. You need offensive long range weapons. So you could use PD ships, um, but then you're detracting from your firepower. And then that means the missiles still get through like we saw there. Even with 20 destroyers, that's half my fleet capacity as PD pretty much. Missiles still get through kill your ships and you're left with more less offensive firepower so they'll still overwhelm you in the end and kill your ships it just takes a bit longer and you won't do as much damage to them because you have less offensive long-range weapons because you used up half your fleet capacity with point defense weapons okay all right um i've got a couple other battles on a quickly test before this gets a bit too long so for this fight, I'm using a early cruiser carrier design with uh, missiles and point defense. It gives long range firepower while our strike craft close in and hopefully do some damage. We're using the carrier combat computer to see if they've fixed that a bit. We are using afterburners to see if we can try and keep away from the missile fleet a bit as well. We'll see if we can turn the tables on them a bit. And we've got a missile fleet here, which is the same, which is won a lot of the battles but we found uh, a couple of successful designs to counter them no cloak on this fleet we're just going with speed to keep away and to see how a carrier early carrier works against early missile ship because some people did request to see that well, let's see how this goes quickly all right engage them long range strike craft away Gauging the firing missiles and the strike craft are going in. PD is whittling away at their missiles. See the armor going down. Let's just look at the damage. The damage to hull. Not a lot from either side at the moment. Swarm of missiles doing some improved strike craft. Just trying to batter down the defenses by the look of it. The armor on both sides going down. Shields holding, because it's all bypass weapons pretty much. The hull's going down a little bit, we lost a ship. Fleet ships are retreating, we've lost more ships. 
Oh, have we got a winner here, guys? Have we got a winner? Gonna be close. Although they've lost more ships. Looks like we might have a winner. Yep, there we go. So strike craft as well. There we go. We've got a winner. See, the carrier, carrier combat computer seems to work a bit better. Engaged way out here, so I could probably maybe even get a bigger range. So the strike craft took off straight away and went straight for their fleet, which is good. They didn't take any diversions sometimes around the place and, you know, take the scenic route. There. They went straight in quite quick and just hammered them. And that was with just the Type 2 strike craft, which you can get pretty early in the game. So they lost eight to our three, a very clear win there. So we've seen artillery, the energy uh, tor uh, torpedoes, uh, proton launchers, to proton torpedoes they call them now, and also strike craft or long range weapons, which have um, you know been able to mitigate some of that damage. And also same sort of thing against the artillery and energy things we saw. Probably you can make this design more efficient you could probably include some early shield hardens in here if you've got them, or maybe some other auxiliary slots to, um, you know, or armor hardeners if you if you've got that as well. You know, depending if you get any of those see those techs early enough in the game, that thirty to forty year period. So you could pick something else here, you know, extra targeting or something. You know, they didn't, didn't seem that useful the afterburners because it was just once again a static fire away at long range battle. All right, I'll end the, uh, end the video here. It's been a bit of a longer one with all this testing. So I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Um, you know, hit that like button for me. Um, hit the notification button if you like so you know I'm doing videos. I've been doing a fair few videos over the next uh, uh, few weeks and a month. And um, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.